fourth of a billion dollars worth of roofing. 14,000 roofs. It's a tough business. Preparation meets opportunity. Single man's dream job. Married man's nightmare. L.C. Nussbeck. I started from my basement as a contractor and eventually grew it to 18 states and 173 million in sales. Booyah, baby! Either the next guy's gonna win the deal or you're not gonna get the deal. The velocity of information through your company. We understand that like this is valuable stuff. I think the contractor should be talking directly to the carrier because they're doing the work. You don't brand yourself as being an expert and you create your own following. It's the nightmare of being a small business owner. You just happen to have found this amazing niche. Let's start with what is an MRP, man, Management Pro Pair Program, what are the history of role, and, and then we'll get into how you got involved. Yeah, so, you know, I first of all, I've been in the industry over 25 years. I've always had a career goal of building a billion dollar enterprise. With a B? With a B. Unfortunately, that's very difficult to do with a roofing company. It's difficult to get past 100 million with a roofing company. <laughs> yeah, been, been there twice, and that was, that was about the limit that we could scale the business to. But MRP is managed repair program. Right? It is. Okay. It is. And so, you know, with a roofing company, you know, there's lots of competition. You know, if you're in the storm restoration business, hail doesn't hit your backyard every year. So you've got to travel and that can be taxing. Uh, I always say it's a single man's dream job and a married man's nightmare. <laughs> Relationships don't last too long. Yeah, they're, the storm they're difficult to maintain. It's a feast or famine business, but it's you know it's where preparation meets opportunity. My last roofing company, we had uh, we were licensed in over forty states. We had city licenses in over five thousand cities. It was Aspen, right? That's correct. Yeah, yeah. I, my company, my old company, used to compete against yours. Like, right, man, Aspen beat <laughs> us. Or as oh, we got here right. Yeah, Aspen's not here yet. We got, we're on the jump here, and uh, so we used to rate ourselves. How quick we were penetrating the market against your company. Now I never met you before today face to face. Right. But I remember that those yard signs going up. I remember that you guys you guys were quick at the mobilization and uh give us a run for our money in some of the store markets. So. Speed still the name of the game. What's unique about a match guy managed repair program is we get the contractor to the affected area within hours of the event occurring. So, but hold on, let's back up a little bit because I want to get into Mad Sky. Yeah, but generally MRPs because there's different MRPs. You're not the only only MRP out there. No. There's Crawford Connection. Yeah, what are some of the Crawford other names out there? Contractor Connection. They're the biggest. There's Alacrity, BrightServe, Nexus Group. In in essence, and what they're designed to do um, is to get a contractor there immediately on on the claim. Get involved, basically run the lead or the claim, and actually, hopefully, the, the contractor getting that deal as part of the MRP program is wanting to do the repair. That's right. And sometimes they're involved with the, the uh, photographic essay or the communication back to a desk adjuster as far as, well, what does need to be repaired? So sometimes they're, in a sense, I don't want to use the word adjusting the claim. There's probably different words you call them adjusting the anomalies, but they're, they're feeding that desk adjuster information to approve and settle the claim and they're in essence getting to work. So for the customer standpoint, they're getting a faster service to some extent, or could be, depending on who the contractor right. is. Right, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it depends. But the claim process is designed to move quicker through an MRP program, is that it, correct? It is, and if you think about manage repair, take roofing aside for a second. You know, it all started with healthcare, mm -hmm. and then it moved to auto. You know, if you get in an accident today, they give you three call top carrier, preferred and they that, tell you what yeah. body shop to take the vehicle to, and it's a pretty efficient process. Can you even help you organize getting a rental car? Mm -hmm. And so in property, it's different because, you know, a Honda Accord in Phoenix is a Honda Accord in Denver, right? So all the pieces and parts are the same, and the mechanics and the labor is the same. But in property, everything's different. Every home is unique. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in property, we're really where those TPAs that I mentioned before, they penetrated the water mitigation. Space. So yeah, so if you have a toilet that overflows or flood Correct. or something like that, and you know, it basically cuts out a lot of the middlemen. Instead of first sending 
uh, an adjuster out to the site, the insurance company can send it to a third party administrator called a managed repair program mm -hmm. who manages a contractor network that can actually perform the work in the local area. You know, many large insurance companies, Ivy League grads, people with a lot more money than you and I have attempted a roofing program in the past, but they've all failed. How long have MRP's been around? I you mean, know, uh, 100 years? I mean, it's been a, it, at least a century. So yeah. MRP by itself is not a new thing. It's not a new okay. thing. It's just a new thing that's for the first time in history, working in roofing. The common denominator that all the other manager pair programs have is they kind of copied and pasted one another and they really don't understand the roofing contractor and the roofing community, the supply chain. And what we did at Mad Sky is kind of looked at all the other manager pair programs and said, what do they offer that's unique? Well, they certainly all offer a valuable lead, but beyond that, what else do they offer? In the roofing industry, you know, all of us do things a little bit differently, but we're all selling, we're all building, we're all collecting, and so then we all have our you know own unique characteristics and personalities inside of those businesses. And so when I looked at how do we get all the contractor roofing contractors to do things the same way, we had to take it upon ourselves to do the heavy lifting. So providing all the software to the network, doing the relationship management with mm -hmm. the insurance carriers. You know, the contractors are the lifeblood of Mad Sky. And really what we offer is a labor only program, which it makes things a little more complicated because at Mad Sky, we're providing the material by issuing a purchase order to the roofer mm -hmm. and they can send it to any of the approved suppliers in our network, which mm -hmm. is over 3000 branches in our network today. How did you, evolve into an MRP? Because you got into this about, what, four years ago? Yeah. I kind of remember when, I, when Mad Sky popped up. I remember when Aspen changed hands and stuff like that. Never knew you, but I remember I remember start seeing the Mad Sky name about four years ago. Um, and how did you, what made your decision to get into the side of the industry? And, and then I want to get into the details of Mad Sky. So, you know, roofing is like Hotel California. You can get in, but you really can't get out. Well, it's tough, it's tough to leave storm chasing. It took me three years to figure out, how do I make the same amount of money or something close? And get out of that, you know, to that quick dollar that you're used to. Yeah, storm it's, chasing. It's, it's it's tough to be a contractor. It's a tough business, and the claims business is chaos business. And so, you know, having built two roofing companies to over a hundred million dollars, uh, personally training over fifteen thousand salesmen in the industry, you know, I've learned what's easy and what's very difficult. And uh, when when I developed this concept, I was managing my previous roofing company and I went to a top three insurance company, pitched the concept to them and they basically said, you're the antichrist, no thank you. <laughs> the antichrist. Yeah. You know, the industry, I think it, both insurance and contractors kind of have a love-hate relationship with one another. We can't, you know, we certainly as roofers don't want to bite the hand that feeds us. And at the same time, there's a lot of regulations and Department of Insurance regulations that the insurance State companies statutes, kind of follow. politics, yeah. PPA. Yeah, I thought I knew a lot about insurance and still, until I partnered with them. So back to the question, you know, having been trying to build a company north of $100 million, I just got burnt out. And so I Plus sold, you probably spent a lot of time on the road like I did. Yeah, yeah, I lived on the road. There's not a state east of the Rockies. I About four years ago, I was like, Daddy, can't you figure out a way just to stay home? I mean, I literally, when you storm chase, if you're good at it, you're living perpetually on the road. There's no way to, like, delegate you all are. the stuff you got to do. So, And, you know, and really, Mad Sky is my purpose. And, you know, Mad Sky, the name, my wife came up with the name after our two oldest daughters, Madison and Skyler. Oh, is that a, okay. I was just wondering how that... And, I always thought it was Mad Sky, like, Mad Sky. <laughs> yeah, you know. Kind of Angry clouds. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we started Mad Sky Roofing and Restoration in 2014. And after about six months of launching that company, I got a phone call from that gentleman. It was, 2000, it was August of 2014. From the carrier? Correct. Okay. He said, I'm the director of strategic relationships at the top three carrier. And are you still interested in doing that roofing program? And I kind of thought to myself. Yeah, MRP type program. Correct. Okay. Yeah. The Mad Sky as you know it today. And it was a concept in 2009. When I got the call in 2014, 
We spent about the next nine months putting a contract together, the workflows together. And which carrier was the first carrier? Liberty Mutual. Liberty Mutual, okay. Yeah. And their other brand, Safeco. We launched the program in Texas as a pilot in 2015. We ran about 500 assignments and the contractors did a phenomenal job. And according to the client, we broke almost every measurable record that they have when it comes to severity, cycle time, loss of Close, the clients. You know, oh, okay. Yeah. And then customer service is a key driver for insurance companies. So being able to cut out all the middlemen and go directly from insurance co- company to roofing contractor. And really the, the roofing contractor is simply the eyes, e- eyes and ears on the ground. They connect with a virtual desk adjuster. All right, so let me, let me back up for the audience real yeah. quick. Because so, you understand your program and somebody watches this might not. So real quick, in, in 2006, when Hurricane was it, Katrina was 2006, right? Uh, Katrina was 2005. 2005, yeah. and, then Wilma hit, and then Wilma hit right after. Right. So Katrina, I went down on a, some kind of MRP program. Not because I really wanted to, but I thought I'd check it out because I needed to get new... I wanted to get my salespeople's feet wet in a new market. And we weren't familiar with South Florida. So I joined, I think it was called Service Lane or right. Real I'm, familiar, I'm familiar with Service Lane. A lot Lane. of state farm claims. Yeah, and actually they were acquired by a company called BrightServe during that time. Mm-hmm. And they left the Florida market during the hurricane. Now the only reason that we that I signed up for that, because I, I, I didn't even know what an MRP was, they're giving us leads right. to go on in South Florida and we were opening up a satellite office out there. And I said, what a great way in the first 90 days. Get some initial leads. Um, they sent us some business. Gave us basically the, we, we weren't, I don't know if we were adjusting then. There was a lot of UPPA laws back then. But we weren't typically adjusting, but we were sending our, our recommendations as a contractor to a desk adjuster who basically, if we if we said, hey, this thing was toast, we sent them some pictures. Right. It would get approved. And then we'd be, we'd be able to do the work. Now, that worked for me in the first three months. And then we got so busy with other regular claims sure. of door knocking and Stuff like that. We now we took a six percent hit, and then we got hit with some service fees. As far as I remember, I think I ran like forty or fifty deals like that. Right. And after three months, it just didn't make sense for us to do it anymore because we we're too busy with regular business. I didn't want to lose that six percent. Sure. It's so a in great essence, way to get I used an, started, but I used an that was basically an MRP program that That's I was right. involved with right. um, as an entrance into the Hurricane Katrina South Florida market. It was actually that that same year and that same carrier was my first entry to a managed repair because when Service Lane uh, no longer accepted assignments, my wife's parents actually came to me and said, somebody at State Farm wants to meet with you. They're the state director and they're having trouble getting roofs on. And, you know, there were seven hurricanes in 0405. The entire state was affected. And so what we would do is State Farm would go out and adjust the claims and the homeowners who needed a roofing contractor, they would simply fax us a referral and we would go out there, verify that the scope and measurements were accurate and install the roof. Because but we, State Farm would actually go to the claim first? Yeah, absolutely. See, these, the ones I got, I don't believe there was even an adjuster there at this time. I, I think yeah, they were so uh, backed up. We were the first ones All there. the claims we got were already adjusted. Okay. We just simply went out and verified scope and measurements. Okay. And um, we put on 14,000 roofs on a non-Bloomington-approved program down there for State Farm. Was that, South, was that Katrina? Yeah, we started after Charlie was was a, was and all the way through time. Wilma. So we, we ran claims for him throughout the entire state of Florida. And it was after that experience when I left and started Aspen contracting. You got a taste of it like I did back then, I how did. those work. I did. It probably and planted a seed for it, later on. It was. And what I learned was it came with a 90% closing ratio. I mean, these were lay down referrals. And so you could literally... You know, there's a lot of attrition in roofing, kind of have to have the revolving door. You're always recruiting, hiring, training, and trying to retain your talent. And when you have opportunities from the largest carrier in the country, throwing you deals that you can sell with a 90% closing ratio, I thought, this has got to be the future. Right. And that was that was a time when uh, State Farm had a PSP program. What is PSP? A preferred service provider. It was a State Farm program. Uh, it's no longer in existence today mm-hmm. uh, due to some Chinese drywall issues and some other things. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, State Farm's the biggest carrier in the country. And I thought to myself, there's got to be a way to get this done. So the problem I had is I was a roofing contractor. 
And insurance companies have a, have a hard time. You're the Antichrist. Yeah, that's what they <laughs> called me. When I started Aspen, you know, I thought building a national brand would be the way to go. But what I learned was, you know, contractors are rough on each other. They call in each other on you know, OSHA and, you know, we're well, trying to steal each other's salesmen and crews. Right. And, right? It's a tough business and, it, and, you know, it takes tough people to survive and thrive. And so, having built two big roofing companies, I thought to myself, you know, maybe the managed repair program is the way to go. And I believed that I could convince the insurance community to trust the roofing community. That's a big barrier today still. Uh, fortunately, Liberty Mutual gave us that opportunity. So you had your big break then in 2014. Fast Correct. Forward. Yeah. Guy so called you in, pitched he, your program. He calls me in, and we sat down for 12 hours around a round table and sketched out the business model you see today as Mad Sky. And, you know, we did ran the pilot. It was very successful in 2015. It was only a four-month pilot. And then they asked us because the, the results came back pretty favorable to build, building out a national program. So they asked us to scale 12 states and we only had two months to put it together. Now we're in 2016. Now we're in 2016. So you probably had some growing pains there. We didn't do anything <laughs> right in 2016. And most of the contractors that were in our network in 2016 are no longer in our network because we struggled with so many things. And you know, it was a it was lot a of hard second lessons. Second year in a, in a very fairly new part of the industry. It, yeah, and we got 5,000 claims in two days, and it was overwhelming to us, to our network. The model wasn't fully baked. Mm -hmm. The concept was there. It was all still from one carrier at that time. That's correct. correct. Okay. Yeah, it's just one carrier. 2016 was a rough year for us and our network and all of our partners. And so in 2017, we put all the building blocks together, and we scaled the business, had a wildly successful year. We did. $50 million last year profitably and we retained 80 plus percent of our network and then this year 2018 has really been a banner year even though first five months of the year we had no hail it was a very fruitful summer oh, you're based out of Denver Colorado correct that's correct so you must have had with the, the, we had a billion dollar plus I don't know two billion dollar hailstorm this year across the state of Colorado that's right. how many Claims or how many contracts did you did you work in that in your backyard? We talked about speed's the name of the game. Mm -hmm. In this program, it's so fast, Anthony. There's no three to six month project, right? It's three to six weeks at most. And some in some cases, we put roofs on from the time we received a claim to the time we had the roof done in three days. Let's talk about that a minute. So pretend because I think guys watching this look, especially on my page, it's been a lot of negative comments about MRPs. Look, some of there. I think that there's pros and cons of anything. There is. So, so yeah. I'm a contractor. Pretend I don't. You know, I don't know. I'm in. I'm in Colorado. All right. I got a couple sales guys. So I sign up with you. My first. Let's say my first leads. Uh, just keep it simple. A ten thousand dollar asphalt shingle roof. Okay? Right. That's actually talk, the average job. Talk to me about the process. How do I get the lead from you? What happens when I show up? What am I doing with my iPad? Let's go through the whole thing on on to the end when it when it pays out. I want to walk through everything. Okay. Yeah. So first of all, it's free to join, and we onboard you as the company owner. Get your licenses, your insurance. We okay. do an interview. Ask you questions like, why would you want to be a part of a program like this? Who's your uh, what's your manufacturer of choice? Where do you buy materials at? Those sorts of things. Mm -hmm. And then after we onboard the company, we onboard your team into a CRM. To we assign do. Leads. We we provide all the software. We run a claims management system what do you use on, on the curiosity? Salesforce. Salesforce. Okay. Yeah. And so we give every contractor and their entire team a license to Salesforce. So whereas you, as the company owner, you can see all the activity of your salespeople, and then they can see specifically their own files. And in our program, it, we receive the claim electronically from the carrier, okay. and we send it directly to your salesperson. Okay, that's where I want to start. So I'm a, I used to sell, before, before I became an owner, I actually like selling better than being an owner. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so I get the lead from you in my sales force. Okay, I go to Mrs. Smith's door. I don't know, it's not definitely a slam dunk, right? Am I, do I know ahead of time if she's possibly got a signed contractor? What's the ratio? Yeah, there? How so does that work? So, in fact, that's a good question, Anthony. Because that could be a con. If she's already got a, <laughs> she already got a yard signed, you already contract, I'd be like, man, do I really want to climb on that roof? Yeah, we've had quite the chaos when we 
send a claim to a contractor and they show up there's already another contractor there so you try to find that out ahead of time we do we find okay. that out at dispatch when we make contact with the policy holder we ask them the question do you already have a roofing contractor and if they say yes then not only do we have 3,500 roofing contractors in the network, we have 1,500 field adjusters. You say field adjusters, an independent adjuster? They are, they're all independent adjusters. Licensed as adjusters? Yeah, we partner with IA firms. Okay. And uh, we can source their people out in the field. So if the homeowner says, I already have a contractor, the last thing we want to send is- You don't want to send me? No. Because I might get in a fight with a guy over there. <laughs> and believe hey, it or not, that, that's only happened a couple dozen so times. You'll, so you'll try, to, you'll, you'll try to circumvent and send an IA or someone that's going to maybe do it for an inspection fee. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, we pay them a hundred dollars. We so, call it appraisal only. So let's come back to that. Let's stick with me. I'm the sales guy. I'm at the door, so I'm new. So one of the positives might be okay. I'm getting a free lead, right? I yeah. have to pay for this lead. Correct. Am I getting an eagle view? Am I getting what else? Am I getting all of it? Yeah. So not only do we provide the Salesforce license, but when we receive the assignment, we have to pay a toll fee to Exactware through Exact Analysis, and basically that's a data analytics tool where the carriers process and send us the assignment and once we receive that it's integrated to Salesforce <coughs> and we send it to the roofing contractor along with an aerial cat it could be sky measure so, so, I'm, so I'm showing up to her door eagle I got her information view. she's expecting me which yep. is a free lead uh, do I have the eagle view when I show up yes okay I do yeah it's right in the file okay. on your Salesforce okay so I get up here I do my inspection. Let's talk about the inspection process. Obviously, I want to find damage, sure. <laughs> right? I, she don't have a contract. I want, let's be honest. The guy's going to want to find. Some and you're damage. an expert at finding the damage. So if it's if it's that marginal area now, is somebody am I iPadding? Am I doing a photographic essay? Am I live with a with an IA or desk adjuster? Because in some states, if I'm adjusting a claim, I could be violating UPPA. You know how that works. Yeah. So how does that process work and determine the damage? This good question. So as soon as we schedule the appointment, then we source the contractor. We want to find out information more than just do you have a contractor already, but what type of damage have you found? And if the homeowner says, you know, maybe to my roof, my siding, my windows, my gutters, we want to source a contractor that can do full scope of work. Okay. Right. So if it's hailstorm, we got dings in the aluminum cladding, gutters window screen holes, you want to be able, you want somebody that can be able to knock out four right. trades. The whole right. point of it is to make this as easy on the homeowner as right. possible, to give them the best experience possible. So the contractor shows up, the homeowner knows who's coming to the appointment. We have a lot of automation inside mm -hmm. of our process. So as soon as we assign the claim to your sales guy, mm -hmm. it's going to send an email to the homeowner with your name, picture, right. contact information on it. And so when you show up, you're wearing a lanyard and a bag, it shows your mask guy preferred contractor. Who gives me the lanyard? We do. You do, okay. Yeah. So got my lanyard, I'm here. She says jump up, take a look. Talk. Let's talk about that process, what I'm doing. Am I using an iPad, yes. iPhone? So what you say to the homeowners, you're just setting expectations. I'm going to be here 45 minutes to an hour. We're going to do a live virtual inspection with a desk adjuster that I'm going to connect with through my smart device. And is that usually with a desk adjuster or possibly an IA? Bank? It's it's always an IA. IA, okay, good. Yeah, you. and the IA is doing is sitting somewhere in the country, probably at home. So ultimately, they're ultimately settling the claim. I'm just a, I'm an eyeball. That's correct. You're talking about what I made you're, my you're showing them what Got you it. found. Being a yeah. contractor, we we do very similar role as an adjuster would. We're walking around the elevations, looking for damage from top to the bottom, get up on the roof, do the test squares on each slope. And then once you're done chalking everything, that's when you connect through, it's a Lightgenics is the video okay. platform we use. And that connects directly to our independent adjuster who will mentor you, the contractor around the property, making sure they're collecting all the necessary photos that they need for proper documentation. Mm -hmm. And they also have you do close up and wide shots and they, they help navigate you around the property. Once the inspection is complete, typically within about 30 minutes, the adjuster will give the roofer so, so let an me, estimate. Let's, let's stop there. So I'm talking to this guy through my iPad or iPhone. Am I basically getting a, are we saying, okay, this is approved. This guy can give me approval over the phone. And we, we're getting approval right there. And then it's not going back to a senior desk adjuster. Yeah, this is a really, And up to really what dollar amount? Because obviously you can't do that on a million dollar claim. So is there a dollar amount limit yeah. here? Most carriers give RIAs up to $25,000 settlement authority. While you're putting your ladder back on your truck and filling out it's a approved. contract. The adjuster, yeah, approve. they're verbally going to tell you, I'm going to approve the roof, and that way you can write up the contract and you know get things in order. While the adjuster 
who may have <coughs> thousands of guidelines to follow. Right. Right. And they have to write the estimate, exactimate. They're using a lot of software as well. So let me get this straight because I'm a salesman. Maybe, I'm, maybe I suck at estimating. Maybe I don't have time. I'm not writing an estimate. No. So I'm just saying I'm not worrying an eagle view. I got all that ahead of time. That's correct. And this IA is writing it. He's giving approval right there and then while I'm on a roof. I know by the time we get done off the ladder whether it's approved. That's correct. Okay. So I understand that part. Now what happens from there as that sales associate? I mean, I got the approval. Can I sit down with Mrs. Smith, sign her and pick up materials? Yes. Okay. So let's, let's pick it up from there. All right. The adjuster sends you, you the contractor, back the the estimate. You look it over if there was anything missed, which there always is, right? I'm sure you would agree. I've never seen a, a scope written the first time that I ever agreed with. Well, even if three, <laughs> even, even if ten independent adjusters and ten public adjusters scope the same house, they'd all come up with something different. That, that's <laughs> it's different it's entirely example. accurate. Yes. So he he's writing an assessment. How long before your company sees that, or that sales guy, or that local company working for MRP? It's typically about thirty minutes. Now, if the claims got a lot of damage and it's very complex, it may it may exceed the twenty-five thousand dollars threshold, and then it's got to go up. It's got to go up. Okay. Layers let's stick. Let, this is a ten or fifteen thousand yeah. dollars asphalt. Single Typically, it's about thirty minutes while you're on site putting up your ladder. Uh, I could presumably get, get this exactimate estimate that's approved. Yes. Back in my email. Yes. Within thirty minutes. Within that. thirty minutes. To allow me to enter into a formal build contract with a price and pick out colors. That's correct. Okay, so now that's the speed starting to make sense to me here. So you go inside the home at the kitchen table and you we sign... We still got to get into the math, but the speed of the claim here is starting to make sense. Yeah, right? it's very quick. So you, you go inside the home and you fill out your home improvement contract. We need another document called an authorization to repair or ATR. And once you upload those two documents to our team we automate a purchase order to you. It's basically a PDF document. It says, uh, for Mrs. Smith's house, um, Anthony's roofing company, please accept the order from Anthony because you take the purchase order and your roofing work order and you send it to your favorite supply house. You coordinate delivery. So what if I had, while I was up there, I had to tarp the roof. I'm like, man, we got to tarp this area. Yeah. I can throw that and communicate that emergency repair and get that right away. Yeah, okay. it's, you know, after these hurricanes, pretty devastating. And I don't have to tell you how complicated tarps can be. But well, it can be complicated in getting paid for your emergency repair sometimes. Getting paid for it <laughs> a month and, later, and approval. If you remember to bill right? for it. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and so we can, we can do all that up front. We can approve the tarp. You can, we can even tell you to bring a tarp with you. Right. Right. And so once you have the estimate, you sign the homeowner up. So, yeah, so let's walk through this scenario. So let's just say she's ready to go. She's mm -hmm. like, you know what? I don't want to deal with this. Great. I, I got that estimate back. Maybe I, what, what if I didn't get it back? Could I still enter into a contract based on, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, in like Colorado, you can't enter into a build contract on insurance proceeds. And I don't recommend people do either, but could you order materials, enter a contract without that exact meter? Or is that, are you saying it usually gets there within that same day? It usually gets there same day. Because I know some not, guys get, people, humans get lazy. It doesn't always get there when you want it to. That's true. And they make mistakes and, you know. It's well, let's say it's, a, it's the same day, next day is still better than three weeks. Correct. What most guys are waiting right now. Yeah, it's no lucky, more than a day okay? or two. Right. And so, so I sit down with her, I, I, I pick up materials. Now, no money is being sent to the property owner from the carrier, is that correct? In most cases, that's correct. Unless, unless we're unless we're opting out of other trades. So that's right. theoretically, if I, let's just say it's an asphalt shingle, let's we'll stick with 10000 for the math. $10,000 asphalt shingle roof, simple roof, there's no other trades. We pick out colors, I order it. Let's talk about this because a lot of people are confused about the whole material process of a mad sky. I let's totally get, let's get, get into it. that. First thing I want to correct you on, it's no longer a $10,000 roof to you. It's a $4,200 roof. So this is a labor-only program for roofing, and it's turnkey for all the other trades. Normally, it'd be a $10,000 roof. $10,000 roof. Okay. And you as the contractor are going to get forty two hundred dollars. So what? Are, what is my contract price? Am I writing a contract price or is it, or? A, yeah, you're going to write the contract for. for, for you're the contractor. Right. Matt's guy's not a general contractor. Right. So you're going to contract for the for full the ten thousand. Got it. Right. Well, let's talk about what happens next. I go back to the office next day. What do I do next? How do I order up this job? So you sim simply upload a contract and a work authorization form to us. We issue you the purchase order to send to your favorite supplier along with your roofing work order. You coordinate delivery to the driveway. My company is not paying for the materials. No, you order it, but the supplier bills Mad Sky for it. Felt, drip edge, nails, oh. the whole roof drop. Yes. Okay, so my problem of ordering, maybe not having enough credit, maybe yeah, not be able to get materials fast enough because my credit's all maxed out. That one problem is being alleviated 
for the small contract. Yeah, you mentioned the Colorado storm. We're completely done there. We did $40 million worth of roofs there. It's 40 million RCV. Most contractors are still thinking through how they're going to handle all the production and the collection and the mortgage companies and depreciation and supplements and reinspections, et cetera. In our program, there is none of that. Right? The contractor shows up to the appointment usually the same day. These claims come in really fast. You have to understand when a when a storm first hits, mm-hmm. the first two weeks, most homeowners don't have a contractor yet. And that's when most homeowners file a claim. And so that first two weeks is the most critical for us. And we could see as many as five, 10, 15,000 claims during that period of time. And we're dispatching all of the contractors in, a, in that area. Mm-hmm. And whether they're local to the area or they're storm contractors that are traveling and moving into the area, we get them the assignments. Uh, they sign the homeowner up. Yeah, so they still have, have to be licensed in the area, though, correct? They have to be licensed, yeah. yeah. Well, it depends on what state. But. Yeah. <laughs> Certain states don't have licensing. Let's go back to the math real quick because I want to stay with that there. So my $10,000 job, my production departments order it. Do you get any preferential treatment at the supply house or is it just, hey, no. it's just, just normal? No, that, it's just normal. Okay, am, right? I pay, am I paying a higher amount to the supply house? No. You're not paying anything to the I'm supply I'm not paying house. anything to the supply house. So I'm just sending the order. You're just telling them what you need. And what? your program's paying for that material. That's correct. So they job build. pack's getting dropped. That's right. And as a company, I did not have to absorb a material cost. Right. You don't have to pay a bookkeeper to enter it into QuickBooks, right. audit the invoice to make sure it's accurate. So let's go back to that $10,000 job because this is what a lot of guys are, folks are complaining about. And some might be right, some might be wrong. Maybe they make a little bit more money on a regular job, but I want to I see the math. So if, if you're saying, I'm going to make about $4,200 on that job. Correct. correct. So my material portion or my mad sky portion let's is 5800 5800 Let's see how that $4,200, how much, how much do you think in this business model that I'm paying out for, that I'm going to be paying out for labor with three grand? And how much am I taking as a company? And then I got to pay sales commission. Depending on geography, depends on the labor rate. But let's say the state of Colorado, for keeping things consistent here, you know, the labor rate might range from seventy to a hundred dollars per square. And the contractors, you know, typically going to pay out about fifty percent of this forty-two hundred to their sub. And then they also have to pay their sales rep. If you take the ten percent math. And you pay the salesman ten percent of the forty two hundred, and you pay your crew two thousand. Buddy, fifteen to eighteen hundred. Yeah. Okay. And now you've been doing roofing a long time, and so so has our audience. Fifteen percent on a good day. Yeah, on a good day, fifteen percent margin is pretty good. And in this program, if you take fifteen hundred dollars divided by your forty two hundred dollars, it's a much higher margin. It's more than double. Yeah. But most guys won't look at it that standard. way. They're, they're going to look at it. Well, if I normally would have store knocked this job and sold a ten thousand dollar job, I'm probably after sales commission costs, I'm going to make on a good day fifteen hundred bucks. Right. And and a lot of you guys are lying to yourself because you're making a lot less than that, more more like ten percent. But sure, we've all day, done 15, the job where we made right. a lot more. But so so in this situation now, the one person that's getting paid less here dramatically, obviously, is a salesperson. However, they also do much less. He's getting a free lead. He's getting almost a guaranteed buy. Yeah, it's a 65% wow, closing ratio in our program. And it's speed. And we get them directly. All the contractors in our program agree on one thing. The most value Mad Sky brings to their company has nothing to do with the claims we send, mm. the leads we it's, send. What's well, the claims they get around it? It's the neighbors. Because if I'm, if I'm going to get a community on a Mad Sky claim, I'm not running my I'm not running Mad Sky leads the rest of the community. I'm sending some guys at a door knock. But now i got Mrs. Smith. And because I get materials dropped quickly, yeah. maybe I'm a small contractor and I don't have material credit. Maybe I'm a small contractor, my material credit's maxed out. Right. Maybe I'm a small, whatever, whatever the deal, maybe I'm paying cash. Um, what you're saying is this could be used not as, a, as an end all to your whole business model, but maybe it's 10% of your business model to get in new right. markets, to get into that gated community, to get in, in, a, in a shotgun approach on a new storm where you're getting into some different areas and you transition, you, you know, you send your door knock, you do, you do your regular business model. I did that in South Florida, so I get that part of it. Right. What I did, what we weren't doing in South Florida is this math part where the, MR, where the MRP uh, uh, partner company was actually paying for the materials. Now, right. with that said, you're gonna make less margin, but you also have less cash flow issues. Not just less cash flow issues, we can cash flow your storm. So the carriers pay us, 
instantly as soon as the claim settled once we have your contract which allows you to immediately pay for materials yeah we okay. upload the invoice to the carrier and they pay us within 10 days in full no depreciation and no mortgage companies below fifty thousand dollars so as soon as you have that job sold mad sky sitting on the funds waiting for you to finish the job and we typically can get you paid within three days uh, as soon as you get a certificate of satisfaction form signed by the homeowner so that sounds good. In fifteen, if, if you really could get fifteen hundred on ten thousand, that's a good business model. To not it's have a great stuff. model, and you're getting a quicker claim close faster. Have you uh, have you ever met an insurance adjuster the same day the storm hit? No. Yeah, me neither. And, and I've, I've and, never got well. I've never gotten uh, a very seldom unless they write the claim on site, which is which is not often. Now you might get there the same day because you were fast. Right. All right, but it might be two weeks before the adjuster's coming out. While all the other insurance companies who are not yet, partic not yet participating in our program, while they're coordinating all the adjusters to get to the affected area, we've got hundreds of roofs put on before they even get to the area. We're cutting out the middleman. The carrier loves it because they don't have to pay $1,000 to an IAA to go out in the field and do basically the same job a contractor is going to do. We all have to inspect the property, write a scope of loss, take measurements, take photos, but this, and write but, but an this is, But this, what I see this is doing is speeding up. Because look, I, the sales process, I, I know E to Z. I mean, it's a three to four week process if you're lucky to get to that ACV check in the mail. Yeah, if you're really good. You know, and right. what this is doing here, and I'm going to get into some cons too here in a minute, poke some holes into it. But what this is on a positive side, what this is doing is speeding everything up. It's fast. And as a company, I'm no longer even collecting from the customer because I'm getting paid by your company when and how. You always collect the deductible. Always collect the deductible right? from the customer. But the carrier's paying Mad Sky Direct, so the homeowner doesn't even have to mess with receiving an ACV payment, made joint payable to the banks. And then how soon do you pay the contractor? Within three days of getting, a, as soon as you get a piece of paper signed by the homeowner saying they're happy with the work you performed, we pay you within three days. Within three days. So I'm able. So if and I finish so, my and, roof in on the future, it's going to be within hours. If I finish my roof on a Friday, most of my most crews are going to want to get paid by the following Friday, right? Including the salesman. Uh, yeah, you, think so, about that. You haven't outlaid any cash. So I haven't laid any cash for out. even an eagle view. Just build right? the job. Just build the job. We get you paid. You pay the crew. You pay your salesman. And I got no outstanding material bill. Right. Okay. So those are all, that, and that's a positive. Yeah, and because most people don't realize, the average contractor, Anthony has a $35,000 credit line. You know, that's 10 jobs. So as soon as the storm hits, your friends, your family, or they, your neighbors. Or they, or they owe two suppliers a lot of money and they're, and they're, and they're maxed out on this one. I was there once. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you know. It's in there. Yeah. They're like, man. It happens. We got to go cash only over here. But this, this allows the contractor to take their credit and apply it to the retail opportunities of the neighbors of the assignments we get them. And you know, if you can, if we can get you to the neighborhood a day or two after the storm, and you can put roofs on a few days after that, and be paid in full a few days after that, it's a week cycle time. Well, in the, in the referrals, I mean, we used to try to build when we get into a large Cedar Shake neighborhood, for example, or a gated community. My favorite. We had a couple <laughs> competitors are usually. Heck, one of your companies back in all one. What was it? Uh, Turco. Turco. Yeah, used to guys you guys compete heavy with us in the Cedar. But he who built the cedar, when the cedar shake roof goes on, everybody smells it. Everybody right. can see it. It's like, you can't really tell an asphalt shingle sometimes, but cedar, it's like, all the neighbors want there is tomorrow. Right. So he who builds the fastest after the storm tends to get more referrals and leads. So right. what you're saying is your program could be used as that meat cleaver to go in there, get a quick 50 or 75 claims bill, build them fast, Absolutely. and then take your time doing your peripheral fill-in with your other 80% of your business. So I get all that. Let's go back to this business model one more time. Okay. Because the salesman would have to understand for this business model to work, the salesman's going to make a little bit less money on, an, uh, on a suggested commission for an MRP lead, as they should, because Correct. it's a slam dunk, sell, build, collect type deal. Right. And if you think about it, salesman's not drumming up this opportunity. Right. They're, They're not, not knocking a hundred doors to find ten people to own three. Say, you know the math. A lot of people right now are paying hundred to one hundred fifty dollars just to get to a lead that they don't know if it's going to get sold or bought. Exactly. But what you're saying is, I can get a lead. <laughs> For free, it's free. pretty much a slam dunk. And we're all in it together. I'm so. going to make a little bit less money, but I'm not paying for it. I'm getting a free eagle view. Right. And then I can infiltrate the neighborhood and sell my regular bread and butter business if I choose. By the way, that's how I went into South Florida, so I get that model. 
but we need to understand the math is what it is on this, and it could be up to it could be up to fifteen percent. When does it not when does it not work out? Let's talk about a situation where this doesn't work out the way you want. Like maybe they are signed with somebody else, right? Or why would a job like this tank? Or maybe not everybody has a perfect fifteen percent EBIT on every job. Let's talk. When doesn't it work? When there's no damage. And the, and the salesman wants there to be damage. Well, <laughs> is, there little, know, is there friction that goes on there? Yeah, just because it hailed doesn't mean that there's going to be damage. So one of the lessons of 2016 is we now no longer accept assignments below one inch hail. So there's a really good chance that there will be sustained damage to the roof when we send you out on an opportunity today. So when we assign to directly to your sales rep. They show up to the appointment, they connect virtually through their phone. We help them get the um, scope right up front the first time. And then when we issue the PO and you put the roof on and you get the crew paid and we pay you, if you can make $1,500, which is the same that I made doing hundreds of thousands of roofs, 15% margin. I mean, when you and I sold roofs, they were $3,000. Right. Well, today they were not that low. Mine were a little bit, a little bit bigger. But you know, the average, the average roof today is ten thousand, ten thousand dollars, and the salesman all they have to do is collect the deductible. They can do that up front in the initial inspection, as long as they sign the contract, or wait till the job is complete. But they don't have to collect the job six times. You know, right. first the ACV, then from the mortgage company, and then releasing from escrow. So yeah, so what about the mortgage company? There's no mortgage company. No mortgage company. Below $50,000. Below 50000 And in most cases on commercial, it's less than a hundred. Yeah. Well, more, 95% of all claim, property claims are, are uh, I think that it's around $10,000 average anyways, nationwide. So mo- most most claims guys deal with aren't over 50000 Right. Some of the mild ones are. But yeah, <laughs> Sure. So let's uh, let's go back to this a minute. So I'm expecting now, if I, you know, back when I was selling cedar and stuff like that, if I could get in on a lead in a, in a large cedar neighborhood, slam dunk, I would take less commission to get the rest sure. of the neighborhood. Most guys I know do a job for free, their first one in the neighborhood. I think for most of these guys watch this right now, a lot of guys, uh, you know, they recruit, train, and mobilize salespeople. They have a good sale. I mean, that's storm chase. That's what sure. we do. So this is looked at sometimes as a, as a lay down or a lazy way to go out and get the market, but... A smart entrepreneur might look at it like, well, like I did when I went into Katrina. It's a great way to build Can I put this as one weapon in my arsenal? Or maybe it's not for me at all, but for some people I could see for some smaller contractors or for some guys that want to just get into some markets faster, it it could be a weapon in the arsenal that works. It is. It's one weapon. Some guys, this is their entire business model now. Yeah, I was going to ask you that too. How many guys just do this? Uh, you know, I would say it's probably less than 10% of our network only does Mad Sky work, but 90% of them are utilizing it in the way you just said, which is it's one tool in their arsenal. Right. The biggest barrier to entry for a contractor in our program is typically a contractor doing more than 5 or $10 million because they really struggle with the concept that we buy the material. But if the math works the same and there's a lot less work involved and there's absolutely no overhead, some guys might want to rethink that. Do you do any pro? Do you offer any programs where they where they uh, they can buy the material, or only, is it the only model you work? So that is a really good question. So this split that you see here is only related to asphalt shingles for both residential and commercial. Any other roof system, slate, cedar metal, shake. cedar, tile, low slope. Contractor can buy their own. Contractor turnkeys it, provides material and labor, and keeps 94% of the RC. So in that case, you charge the, the MRP average. I mean, that's what I paid, 6%. Right. Basically yeah. for the lead and, and the, the whole process. Sure. I say lead on the buy, but I don't, want to, I don't want to say it's a necessary buy. What is the buy ratio on your jobs? I mean, is there a do you track that? I mean, sixty five percent closing ratio. No, I'm, I'm talking about the IAs. Uh, I'm maybe rephrase. The well, question. like if I go, if I'm a sales guy and I, you give me ten claims, and it's is, is there a lot of kickback between that IA on the other side of the iPad? Are they oh. are they typically in agreement together? Is there there used to be is there a supplement friction. process that goes on? That's a, that's the whole problem with the industry today is the friction between the field adjuster and the roofer. Right. right, it's a battle of wits on the roof and the desk adjuster sometimes. Yeah, and you know it's just chaos. And so what we what we teach the adjusters is the roofers are our partners; they're our lifeblood. And in 2016, they weren't very kind to them. They're very impatient with them. They weren't mentoring them. 
And today that's all changed. We won't allow an IA in our network to abuse the contractor in any way. Yeah, because that's the guy that's getting the deal done. Let's say I'm, a, I'm that sales guy. Okay, maybe I'm new to a mass guy MRP. Sure. I'm used to fighting with the insurance company. I like to write my fat estimates and supplements like I used to do. You know, I don't miss a you know copper drip, but you know whatever my cedar shakes and all that stuff. We go look at a claim, and this guy on the other end comes out with this rinky-dink cedar shake estimate, and I'm like, dude, come on. What was what is the process for me to go back to that debt? Do I go back through Matt's guy? Do I go directly to the IA? What's the process to get those numbers right? Because it's got that's got to happen sometimes. It happens every time. Okay. So, so supplement still happens. So yeah, I mean, think about it this way, Anthony. The field adjusters you were fighting with yesterday are working with Matt's guy today, right? So their their skill sets are not related to roofing or construction. They're related to policy, procedure, how to navigate the softwares, apply guidelines, and a lot of technical challenges they face. We don't pay overhead profit on roof only, or no, on the roof portion of the claim. That would be a guideline. LC. That would be a guideline, and you know, and that's a liberty. Carriers, that's a that's a that's a famous liberty. Uh, this Liberty Mutual 101, isn't it? I don't know Liberty's blanket policies, but I know the policies they give us. And in our program, with any of our clients, OMP is never allowed on the roof. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot of the you see the top three or four of them going to that kind of standard policy. It could be won and fought in appraisal, but it's a, again now you're six months down the road before you build the yeah, job. Yeah, are you difference. trying to build and scale a business and keep a good brand reputation, or are you trying to? Well, not I'd say I would save that for I might save that process for my other cedar shakes. And get my get my quick ones down here first. Sure, you know, and that, and that's a different world when you knock on a door and you work with a field adjuster and a desk adjuster. That's a lot different than how you would work with an adjuster at Mad Sky. Interesting. Every claim we do has some sort of supplement. So whether it be during the initial inspection, our adjuster writes the estimate and gives it back to you, and you might say, "Dude, there's a two layer You missed the step flashing, or you missed yeah. the second layer, right? You simply tell so you our adjuster them. that they. All they can say is yes or no. So you can ask for the sun, moon, now is this, and stars. Is this, when you say desk adjuster, is this one sitting at the carrier or is it the one that's sitting in your office? Your so, it's, so we have a virtual adjusting network. So these people are mainly working from home. Okay. So when you're in the field and you need a supplement, whether it's during the initial review of the scope of repair or adjuster wrote, or it's in the middle of the project and you find another layer or something like that, you simply... Go into Salesforce and chatter, leave us a note, and ping the adjuster, and they will revise the estimate on the spot. Do you believe that process happens faster than normal because you're in part of the MRP? It didn't used to. It does now. Okay. Yeah. We can. We have, um, so in most cases, we have the $25,000 authority on the initial scope and a $5,000 supplement authority. Okay. So we can approve things quickly. Okay, small ancillary items. You're not, gonna yeah. get, you're not gonna get the other shed approved that wasn't scoped to begin with, that kind of stuff, but small right. obvious things you can document with code or... Absolutely. The contractor on a repair provides a three-year guarantee and a five-year on replacements. And Matt's guy also provides a three-year if the contractor goes out of business, uh, whatever may happen, Matt's guy We'll source a new contractor to fulfill the warranty obligations. We also do all the registrations with the manufacturers for the manufacturer warranty. And most of our carrier clients also provide the same warranty. So the homeowner has a warranty from you, the roofer, me at Bad Sky, the manufacturer, and the carrier. So imagine this, when you call your carrier to file a claim mm -hmm. and they say, we, uh, we have an opt-in program whereby if you haven't selected a roofing contractor yet, we have our own managed repair program whereby the contractor's been vetted, uh, they're insured, they're licensed, they've been trained on our program, and they can be out there today. And oh, by the way, you can hire whoever you want, but if you choose the contractor we send to your home, we'll guarantee their work. That's really powerful. And I know some contractors would like to think that the homeowners don't trust their carriers. That's a small percentage. Most homeowners trust their carrier and want the carrier to provide a repair solution because they don't want to deal with the guy knocking at the door. Some 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 homeowners. Now I'm an old door knocking guy, so I mean, but I can look at the end of the day. There's pro there's pros and cons to any part of the industry. You know, what I mean, one of the reasons I brought you on here is because there's a lot of cons and negatives out there. A lot of that is Facebook chatter. Yeah. And look, this business model is not for everybody. 
but there's some pros to it, and, if, and we, I think we hit on them all. I mean, if you want to speed up, if you want to Porsche your business where you get fast claims or you get sped up through the buy process, basically get a free lead, it might be a way to get into some new areas. Your margin might be a little lower. You might not be able to get crazy as supplementing, but you're trying to close these deals out quick. And you can always have your bread or bread and butter jobs around it. So I, Yeah, so I've done north of a billion dollars worth of roofing, storm restoration roofing, 15,000 salesmen throughout my career. I've worked all over the country. I can tell you this, there is all the obstacles that were in the way of a contractor joining our program have been removed. It's free. There's no overhead. How do you get just the gated community leads? Yeah, <laughs> we haven't figured that out yet. Yeah, just the Cedar Shake, uh, 50,000 plus. No, I'm just kidding. We do get you into that neighborhood. Uh, or we, tile. Yeah, with an invitation. Now, when you're looking at, when your team's looking at these leads and hand them out to contractors, obviously they're trying to give them to the contractors that have a specialty or their application. I Maybe mean, they've done tile or cedar. I yeah. Mean, they must, you got to go through some kind of... Those are all skills. So if you're the company owner and you do every type of roof system and you do siding and gutters, but you don't do windows. So when we onboard you, each one of those is considered a skill. And then when we onboard your salesman, if you have five salesmen, their skills are all different as well. Mm -hmm. And so we do an interview with them to find out what types of roofs they're comfortable inspecting. How tall is the ladder on your truck? If we send you to a two-story appointment, we want you to be able to climb up on the roof. If it's a 10, 12, we need to make sure that you're comfortable climbing that. And all this stuff is part of the onboarding process because when an event occurs, it's too late to join our program. By the time you get onboarded, our storm's over. We did over $40 million in Colorado. We're done. We've been done for months. And those contractors aren't still building. You know, there's there's still probably a few jobs left, but we did most part, thousands of these jobs. The build process faster this summer because they're getting front loaded. That uh, that's a right. problem. So in some situations, obviously the uh, the margin could be lower than the typical job. Obviously, could be. But again, it's not your one end business model because I know some there's there's some companies in Florida that use a preferred contractor network and are just uh, I can't remember the name, but they're just horrible to deal with. I mean, if you're uh, it's not your typical MRP, but let's talk about where the industry is going. Do you see more carriers? And that's why I wanted people to hear about this program, because you have to understand your land. If you're going to play in a landscape of insurance restoration, you need to know all the players. Whether you like MRPs or not, you need to know where they're at, what part of the map they're on, where you fit in, how you're going to work either around them, with them, or against them. Is all, all, I guess you can look at it that way. But where are the carriers starting to look at more of these MRP programs that increasing? Have you picked up new insurance carriers? I tell you this, Anthony, I tell all of you this, the entire industry is going this way. I just left a conference a couple days ago, and it's on the top 20 list to incorporate managed repair into roofing for hail and wind claims. This, is, this isn't a, a here today, gone tomorrow type thing. Next year, we'll send our network, we're three years old. Next year, we're gonna send our network $300 million worth of roofing opportunities. And we're just scratching the surface. And you were, what, what carriers again are you working with? Uh, so today we work with Liberty Mutual, Safeco, Allstate, the Hartford, MetLife, and uh, about a half a dozen smaller carriers that are regional players. And we work in all 50 states. And matter of fact, Allstate, we're running, a, we, we just got approval and launched a new program with them in Texas and Colorado to where if you knock on the door and a homeowner says they have Allstate, whether they filed a claim or not, whether they've had a field adjuster out or not, if you need a reinspection, you no longer have to call, I think it's 800 54 storm and ask for a reinspection or help the homeowner with the claims process. You simply call Matt's guy, we'll do a virtual inspection, and we get it approved for you faster than you could do it on your own. I'm surprised Allstate gave you that power. Yeah. Up and, to 25000 all right? Uh, you know, we don't have check authority through that program. It's a pilot in its early days. And so you're saying, well, so what you're saying is, I'm knocking a door, and it's an old cedar shake roof, and normally I'd go, oh man, Allstate, that sucks. I'm gonna have to call an adjuster in three weeks. They're gonna fight it. I'm gonna go through appraisals to get this approved. What you're saying is, if it was all state, I could call instead of having a homeowner reinitiate the claim or call the claim. I could call if I was a mass guy contractor. Call you. That's correct. And we could do the virtual inspection adjustment that's without correct. calling all state. Correct. That's, that's crazy. We we pull all the. How did they give all that power to the Antichrist? 
<laughs> you, you know, yeah, I got to tell you, Anthony, it's been an uphill well, battle. Well, they must be doing it because they must be closing out claims faster and less costly. You must be pissing off a lot of independent adjusters. I would say the, t- the traditional The IA firms, firms, yes. The firms. So the, the, the field adjusters and the desk adjusters were basically repurposing them. But I've had three out of wait, the on your claims, though, the insurance carrier has no adjusting cost. None. None? None. Do they pick up anything? Nothing. So they have no adjusting cost whatsoever? None. Except Well, except the IA on the phone. That's a proven... Uh, We're covering that cost as well. You're covering that cost as well? Yes. Okay, so the future... Of the So the guys, what that tells you there on the math, you just look at the carrier. Carriers like to save money. Whether you like MRP programs or not, we shared a lot of information today. I hope, you, I hope we wrap yeah, up thanks some for of having me. both the pros and the cons. Um, but the carriers are looking at this thing like a cash cow because they have no adjusting cost. Listen, it's three to your five face is times. Probably, I bet you're facing a target a couple of these top <laughs> IA firms. Like, man, this guy's killing us. Yeah, I've met a few of the CEOs at those top IA firms. They're, they're, they're not getting, particularly they're getting a thousand they're, for inspection. Yeah, they're getting a thousand dollars in inspection, and they take two weeks, if not longer. And they're not skilled in it uh, or have the expertise of a uh, roofing contractor. So not only are we cheaper, we're better and faster. It's truly a no-brainer. And the only barrier to us and a new carrier client is trust. And trust is behavior over time. So the longer Mad Sky thrives, the more volume we get from our current clients and the more new clients we attract to our program. Nice. Well, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Guys, LC is going to be at Wind of Storm this year. I look forward um, to seeing y'all. We're doing a breakout. We're going to get them up. We're going to go over some of this. Uh, I feel like it's my job to put the pros and the cons of any program together. Absolutely. I'll take anybody here at the Speakeasy. That's what we do with mm-hmm. Speakeasy. That's great. Talk about the industry stuff, see what the real deal is, try to the truth of somewhere in between. So come see LC at Wind of Storm. Uh, we're going to go shoot a couple courses for SVGU now and kind of break down this math on the green screen, what we did right here, so, so it makes more sense to me. Perfect. But uh, interesting. Awesome. Thanks, Anthony. See you soon. Bye, everyone.